Pulse is a company which has consistently been making waves in the past many years, uh, giving hard words to some while challenging the existing traditional definitions of advertising. I have with me TJ Lightwala. Uh, she is the marketing servicing lead uh, for growth markets at Accenture Song. Hi, hi, TJ. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being here, and it's a pleasure. You know, from acquiring Droga Five in 2019, which was akin to a heartbreak for many independent agency heads uh, in India and across the world, I'm sure, uh, to making David Droga a creative leader, the CEO of Accenture Song. Uh, it's it's come a long way. I really want to understand from you how would you do how would you go about uh, defining the evolution of uh, Accenture Song in the past few years. Right. So Accenture Song is really a culture of cultures. We are obviously you know a tech powered creative agency, mm -hmm. and uh, for those who know Accenture, we used to be a uh, operations and a technology firm, mm -hmm. but over the last uh, decade or so, we've completely changed the color and a positioning of Accenture Song. Mm -hmm. And Song is that vibey, cool, new agency that does creative, cool things in the world of innovation. Um, and we want to actually be at the forefront of creating impact from a client's perspective. So I think that evolution mm -hmm. from where we started to where we are is a is a testament to what we've been shaping along the years and addressing how we want to position ourselves accurately in the market now. You know, at Vera Can, I mean, always talk about the future more than the present. Yeah. So I also want to understand from you, uh, many years down the line, how would you want the future world uh, to remember Accenture Song? And what do you think will its contribution be to advertising? Oh, wow. That's a loaded question. So the future world, I hope uh, I'm still on the path to creating the future. But certainly there are a few key interesting themes that we want to stand for. Um, one of them is, uh, you know, the areas that we are, you know, heavily focused on is uh, generative AI. And uh, you must have read the recent news in the press that Accenture itself is committing to $3 billion of investment towards the growth of generative AI. But it's not just the generative AI that is making the waves, right? It's the application towards purposeful marketing and driving real impact. Uh, for us, you know, creative inclusion um, is a very important aspect of what we want to do, um, you know, marketing with purpose and the use of Gen AI to do that. Um, and one cool example of that is uh, education in underserved communities. The second important uh, vector is sustainability. And for me, as I'm a marketing lead, um, you know, it's really important how we create sustainable practices in marketing. One of the things that I've been experimenting and thinking about is media decarbonization and what does an effective content supply chain look like and that's really important because on one area you have the growth and the other area you have uh, cost optimization as a form of growth as well so that's the second level and the third one I would say is creating repeatable scalable models that can help um, businesses create more uh, impact in uh, in for for their audiences and clients. And you know, while because we are here at Can, I want to understand from you what is the highlight this year. You know, we always talk about how tech uh, companies are going to dominate uh, Can year after year, and it keeps happening, obviously. Yeah. So, what is the highlight for you? I think my personal highlight has been just the ability to see so many sessions on diversity, equity, inclusion with purpose, purposeful marketing, purposeful definition of situational lives, of underserved communities, uh, women in business, uh, you know, uh, strap uh, sort of um, ecosystems that are resource constrained mm -hmm. have been really important and all brands like Sesedo was on the global stage talking about how diversity, equity and inclusion is good for business. Uh, because it talks about purposeful beauty and beauty as an expression has so many different forms and that's all beautiful and that's an aspect about inclusion taking a central stage for me and I thought that was beautiful and one of my key reflections. Okay. No, uh, in the past uh, couple of years we've seen how Accenture, Accenture has grown overall and Accenture song has uh, the revenue voice has uh, overtaken the revenue uh, 
all the traditional agencies uh, that like maybe Ogilvy, BBDO, McCann. It is the largest digital agency today. So I want to understand from you how are you, what are you, how, what is your approach, uh, and how how is it different from what the others are doing in the market today? Yeah, I think that's a super question. Uh, first of all, from a revenue perspective, yes, we have been growing phenomenally year over year, from twelve and a half uh, to sixteen million this year, and in revenues. So that's certainly healthy uh, commitment to our shareholders. From a perspective of how we're doing things differently compared to other agencies. I think it's really important to realize that we are a uh, tech-powered creative agency and the fact that individually, obviously, we have several competitors, peer competitors, but we are coming together from a go-to-market perspective as one Accenture. Mm -hmm. So one Accenture that is backed by the industry knowledge of uh, Accenture, which mm -hmm. is very deep and typically agencies will not bring industry craft to their clients mm -hmm. um, but we do because we solve for business problems mm -hmm. and secondly uh, it's really interesting because our stakeholders typically tend to be a CEO or a CMO or even more recently the chief corporate development officer of organizations so we actually start with um, the decision making right at the top of the funnel rather than move up from a brand manager or a media manager or a creative manager of top funnel. So I think those two are key differentiators in the way we operate. And I think the last point I will make on the differentiation is obviously we're moving through the consumer funnel, but we're also creating operating models for clients to become more efficient, to become more diverse, to have a platform that's multifunctional and that truly is walking towards the north star of either, you know, cutting costs, uh, saving, um, you know, saving resources in terms of sustainable practices and lastly, uh, creating new pockets of revenue. And what is the uh, revenue growth looking like for this year? So obviously, you know, we are still in motion. And uh, clearly from past history, we know that we're in a good pathway for better success. So we'll, we'll wait for the results to show and uh, we'll stay tuned for that. In the past decade, uh, we've seen Accenture acquire about 40, more than 40 agencies across the world. We've still not seen you come to India. Are you on your way? <laughs> It would be great, absolutely, yeah, hopefully in the horizon shortly. Okay, and is there a, agent, a particular agency that is really, really uh, stood out for you for its cutting edge work that you might want to acquire? <laughs> oh wow, that's a question you want me to uh, answer publicly. <laughs> <laughs> just, just tell me your favorites if you have them. No, so you know what? I'm really inspired by the work that comes out of India. Personally, I've been a juror this year at the Creative B2B Alliance and I've had uh, roughly more than 400 entries that I've been judging. And the shortlists have been, you know, a discussion of very, in, very intense uh, discussions internally. And we realized one of the key themes that a lot of work is celebrated out of India. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about work, I talk about, you know, like we talk about favelas in Brazil, we also talk about the slums in India and how, you know, communication from a ground up can become really pervasive. And we saw some really cool cases around celebration of community with mm -hmm. large brands do that. Uh, my personal favorite uh, from India is the Cadbury's campaign, which is all about empathy and human behavior and um, the psychology of uh, people across all different uh, economic strata, cultural strata, social strata. Mm -hmm. And that was really inspiring for me. So I certainly hope um, that the the waves of uh, what we do at Accenture Song in India um, will, will become a reality soon. But do you see India becoming a key market for Accenture Song? India is a key market for Accenture Song. We do a lot of work there we have roughly 350,000 people uh, you know working there mm -hmm. so it's uh, not one that we take lightly and uh, I was there in the last uh, five months I've already been there five times to our Mumbai and Bangalore officers with clients showcasing the brilliant work that we do across several different uh, marketing substrates Super. Thank you so much, TJ. It was lovely chatting with you. And I hope to see you soon when you're coming to India next. Thank you for making the time to come see us. <laughs>